Hey all dear friends, this is Prajesh Chaudhary, Quantum Group. Let's see this very beautiful problem of electrostatics from 200 challenging problem of physics. So the question states, given A and B are two uniformly charged shells, having common center, uh, can be randomly oriented, uh, we have to find the force of interaction between them. So the bigger shell A has a charge uniformly distributed charge capital Q, radius capital R. And the smaller shell has a uniformly distributed charge small q and it is small r. They can be randomly oriented. So I have taken this orientation in which the, the flat planes, this is the flat plane of hemispherical shell A and this is the flat plane of hemispherical shell B. And they make angle theta with them. Right now I want to show only the force on B by A. So obviously the force on A would be the exactly uh, equivalent opposite from Newton's third law. And I have, do not have a very clear clue as to which direction A would exert force on B. So let me assume that it exert on a force on a random and some arbitrary direction like this alpha from this line and making an, uh, having value equal to F. So I have to find both the direction as well as the magnitude of the force. So now what I want to do, see here, this was the shell A hemispherical shell A. I have put a mirror image of the shell A here having same charge, same distributed charge. So what does that make? That makes a whole complete uniformly shell. Now this has become a uniformly charged shell and within that uniformly charged shell there is a hemispherical shell B is placed. So because of this complete uniformly charged shell net electric field inside is zero. So net force on B because of this whole uniform shell is zero. So in this case the FB is zero and this FB is zero is because of the force on because of the force by part A and because of the force by mirror image of part A. Because of the force A the because of the part A the force is like this. So because of this part, which is a mirror image of hemispherical shell, the force should be equal and opposite like that. So force on B because of this hemispherical shell B having same charge as hemispherical shell A should be something like that, like this. Uh, this angle was alpha, so it's just opposite like that. So that would be alpha. This is alpha and having same magnitude. Only then this part force and this part force will add up to zero. Uh, we just concluded that because of this net force on B is zero. And now what I want to do, I just want to make a 180 degree rotation. So if I rotate this 180 degree, I will come to this orientation. Simply I just rotated by 180 degree. So now force on this B having charge Q because of this part is this F on this angle. This is alpha, this theta. And now what I want to do? Uh, nothing here. I have just put this diagram here. Now if I want to uh, club this with this, you can see that the force on this B because of this part is F and force on this B because of this part is also F. So if I complete now this inner hemispherical shell like this, on this part force is F, on this part also force is F in the same direction. So for the whole hemispherical whole shell B, the force on whole shell B would be 2F. And this is easier to calculate. This is easier for me to calculate with direction I can calculate. So in this case if the force is 2F, so this case the force would be F. Or in other words, in this case if the force is calculated by some whatever value, the force in this case would be half of that. And now from here I can comment on the value of alpha also. So for that thing, uh, this is the force on this uh, smaller inner shell by the bigger hemispherical shell. And obviously the same force would be exerted on the hemispherical shell, bigger hemispherical shell by the inner bigger shell. 
So for this thing, by symmetry, if I uh, want to write the electric field, it would be in this direction here, it would be in this direction here, it would be in this direction. Here it would be in this direction, here it would be in this direction. And multiply by the charge, so force on these parts would be like that. And if I make the vector sum, so clearly force on this would be in this direction like that. So if because of this force on this is in this direction, so because of this force on this should be on this direction. So from here I can say this alpha is 90 degree. So mean the force would be on this direction here. So whatever is orientation, the amount of the force, magnitude of force would be along this direction. In the perpendicular to the uh, bigger diameter this is the bigger shells diameter from the two ends so the force would be perpendicular to that so now in that case right now first of all in this case I want to find the force of interaction so whatever force of interaction I am getting uh, the required case that is asked in the question would be half of that so let's go ahead so now that is the situation so in this case if the force is F so in this case the force would be half of that in this direction all right so now to find this force of interaction let's go to the next page here and now now i will find the force on this pink color bigger uh, hemispherical shell by this uh, yellow color a uh, smaller shell so at the general point here the electric field is because of these two this part is q so this part is also q so its total charge is 2q electric field here is k into 2q divided by r square and here i want to take a small area say small area is da the surface charge density of this uh, bigger hemispherical shell is sigma the charge on this da part would be uh, dq and that dq is equal to sigma into that da and uh, df on this part the df on this part would be a dq into the local electric field there so put the value of that thing dq sigma da and is a q by 2 pi epsilon naught r square so what I want to find the I want to find the electrostatic pressure at that point so electrostatic pressure on this bigger shell P is the df by da force per unit area so electrostatic pressure P is df by da and that is a, that will come out to be this da would come here that will sigma q divided by 2 pi epsilon naught r square and the sigma for this thing is a capital Q divided by 2 pi r square so sigma is capital Q divided by 2 pi r square just simplify that thing we'll get the uh, electrostatic pressure at the points of this bigger shell P is equal to uh, product of charges divided by 4 pi square epsilon naught r power 4 right okay now now this is the bigger hemispherical shell at all the points of the surface there is an outward electrostatic pressure a uniform pressure so because of this outward pressure there would be a force in this direction F and uh, if I want to find the force on this direction I will use the flood mechanics technique so the net force is equal to pressure into uh, area projection of the curved surface in the direction of the required force so I want to find the force in this direction so perpendicular to this direction the area projection is pi r square so f is equal to simply p into pi r square the required force is p into pi r square and if i put the uh, value of p that i have just obtained before so finally we'll get f is equal to uh, q into q divided by a 4 pi epsilon naught r square so now come back to here so in this case we obtain the force to be force of interaction actually I obtain force by this on that and from the Newton's third law force on the smaller one because of this would be the same and opposite direction. So in that case where there is a this bigger hemispherical shell and the smaller complete shell 
having common center force of interaction is k uh, sorry uh, product of charges divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r square but the required case was that and we had concluded that the force of interaction in this case would be half of that the required force of interaction then becomes uh, q into small q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r square so there are two good thing that this force of interaction is number one independent of the relative orientation of the two hemispherical shells and uh, it does not depend on the radius of the inner shell and actually the direction does not depend on the orientation of the inner shell the direction of the force depends on the orientation of the bigger hemispherical if this is the bigger hemispherical shell that is the flat plane so this is the flat surface the flat plane and the force is perpendicular to that flat plane so that is all uh, for this video enjoy and uh, stay tuned for the, some very good videos thank you